Now turn to part one. You will hear a woman called Tanya talking to her friend called Simon, who lives abroad. Tanya is planning to visit Simon. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hello? Hi, is that Tanya? Yes, Simon. Lovely to hear you. How are you? Very well, and we're so looking forward to seeing you. So am I. Now, I don't have a lot of time, I'm afraid, so I wanted to make sure we've got all your details. Have you confirmed your flights? Yes, I'm definitely coming on the 22nd of June. Excellent. Have you got your flight number? Not with me, I'm afraid, but I promise I'll email it. Tanya promises to send her flight number. So, flight number has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Hello? Hi, is that Tanya? Yes, Simon. Lovely to hear you. How are you? Very well, and we're so looking forward to seeing you. So am I. Now, I don't have a lot of time, I'm afraid, so I wanted to make sure we've got all your details. Have you confirmed your flights? Yes, I'm definitely coming on the 22nd of June. Excellent. Have you got your flight number? Not with me, I'm afraid, but I promise I'll email it. Let me make a note of all this. Yes, do, because one of us will try to come and collect you from the airport, if we can. I presume you'll be coming into Terminal 1? Uh, I don't know. I'll have to find out which one it is. Yes, you must. <laughs> we don't want to be waiting at the wrong one. But hang on. I'll be arriving at about lunchtime, and that'll mean you have to take time off work to pick me up. You really mustn't do that. Look, we're not all that busy at work, and if there's a problem, I can text you when you arrive, and you can take a taxi. Okay. There's a really good company called Pantera. Can you spell that? It's P-A-N-T-E-R-A. -E、they have a stand at the airport. You can't miss it, and they're really reliable. Great, thanks. How far are you from the airport? About 40 minutes. And you're near the city centre, aren't you? We're east of it, actually.、Uh, don't tell the driver city centre, because you'll really get caught up in traffic. OK, a y and I'll make sure I carry your address with me. Now, have you got my mobile、uh, cell phone number? Yes, you sent it last month. But I tell you what, I don't think I've got yours. I'd better have it now, just in case. OK, a y and I changed it recently anyway. Ready? It's 077653284. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Thanks. Now, what should I pack? Well, all the usual, casual clothes mainly. 
though you'd better bring an evening dress. We'll be having at least one fancy dinner in a hotel restaurant. Okay, now, when you're coming, unfortunately the weather is not going to be brilliant. I know, it's the rainy season. I'm bringing an umbrella. Uh, we have tons of those, so don't pack one. But pack a raincoat, a good one, because we'll try and get out for plenty of hikes. Okay, sure. Sounds super. Just what I love. And I'd better remember to pack my sturdy walking shoes. Excellent idea. It's pretty rugged round here, so they have to be tough. I can imagine. I'm so looking forward to getting out. Oh, Simon, before I forget, you recommended I read a book about your area. Yeah. What was the name again? I'd like to read it, to get an idea of the history, etc. It's called Mountain Lives, and it's... Hang on, I'm just writing it down. Okay? And it's by Rex Campbell. Great. I'll try and get hold of that. Well worth it. Now, the really important things are gifts. Oh, don't worry about that. Just bring yourself. I know. <laughs> but I'd like to get something for your parents. What about Janice? I know she loves English tea. Oh, that's very kind. But she's not drinking so much of that these days. But she'd love some chocolate. You know her favourite. Oh, yes. That'd be nice. I'll do that. And Alec, is he still into racing? <laughs> very much so. I was thinking of bringing a calendar, you know, with horse racing pictures. What a good idea. He'd love that. Great. So that's about it, I think. Yes, I think so. So you'll send me your number again? That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. You will hear a woman asking a shop assistant about DVD players. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. Hello, I'm interested in buying a DVD player. Can you help me, as I don't know very much about them? Of course. We sell quite a range. Actually, we're doing a customer survey at the moment, so I wonder if I could fill in this form about you, and that will actually help me to advise you on the best DVD player for you. Oh, OK. First of all, your occupation. Um, student. OK. Then, have you already got a DVD player? Uh, no, I've never had one before. Uh-huh. And how much do you think you want to spend on a player? Mm, I'm not sure, really. But I have got a budget. My friend said I should allow about £100. But I can't afford over £85, so that's what I'm working on. Mm -hmm. And do you watch DVDs very often? Um, depends what you mean by often. I don't know what the norm is. Is it about two a week? Uh, I suppose I watch three a month. <laughs> that's enough for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what sort of films do you like watching then? Action movies? <laughs> Not really. Oh. My boyfriend always insists we watch science fiction movies, but I prefer thrillers. Something to get your teeth into. OK. Just one more. Do you watch other DVDs, ones that are not films, like music or something? 
Not much, because I don't want to spend the money on something I can watch on TV. But I occasionally rent out comedy programs, and I fight with my boyfriend over all the sports DVDs he watches. Before you hear the rest of the program, you have some time to look at questions fifteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions fifteen to twenty. Okay, let me explain a bit to you about the DVD players that are in your price range. First, there's the DB30, which has only got basic features, but it is a bargain at sixty-nine pounds. Now, all the DVDs come with an after-sales service that starts when the guarantee runs out. As it's so cheap, the DB30 comes with a limited after-sales service, as it only includes parts. You would have to pay for most of the repair.、Oh, mm, seems okay.、Hmm. Then a slight grade up from that is the XL643. This comes with an additional feature in that it has an extra button allowing you to record. That's quite useful. Oh yes, that would mean spending less on DVDs to watch. Yes, so you'd make the extra money back on it that it costs.、Mm. Let me see how much it is.、Uh, ah, yes, that one's actually reduced at the moment from seventy-nine pounds to seventy-one ninety-nine. Oh, I think it's worth the extra myself. And is that the same level of after-sales service as the other one? Well, you get a bit more for your money because what we're offering is a discount on labour. So you don't pay the full price if you have to call an engineer out. I see. Then the last one is this Tri-X Twenty Four. It's a very good player, and you can use it to listen to your CDs as well as watch DVDs. Hmm, it looks nice, but I bet it's expensive. No, it's not top of the range. Let's see. Yes, it's ninety-four pounds. But what you have to remember is that that includes insurance, so you don't have to pay extra for that, and it comes with a guarantee that's valid for three years as opposed to the usual one. What do you think? Hmm. Maybe. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. And you will hear a discussion between a tutor, Dr. Lester, and two students, Greg and Alexandra, at the end of a talk about music. In the first part of the discussion, they are talking about some of the students' favourite instruments. And favorite styles of music. Complete the table showing the students' opinions. Choose your answers from the box. There are more words than spaces, so you will not use them all. You may use any of the words more than once. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-six. I think it's time we looked at the results of our survey.、Uh, what did you find out, Alexandra? 
We're a group with very diverse tastes, Dr. Lester.、Mm, I'm not surprised. What were the favourite instruments? Well, Greg loves drums. He told me he played drums when he was at primary school, and now he plays drums with his friends at weekends. They have a band.、Mm, good.、Uh, what do you like to play, Alexander? My favourite is the guitar. However, I haven't played for years, so I keep hoping to start again. Will I go on with the others?、Mm, yes, please. Katya is like Greg. She loves to listen to drums. She says she's not a player, just a listener. Rachel, as you know, is a violinist, so of course it's natural that she should favour the violin.、Mm, so we have two people who love the sound of the drum, and two who like strings:、uh, the violin for Rachel and the guitar for Alex. What does Harry like? Harry says the best instrument of them all is the piano. He claims it's more versatile than any other instrument. Emiko plays the piano, but her favorite instrument is the flute. The flute. Yes, Emiko plays the flute too, of course. Hmm. Thank you, Alexandra.、Uh, Greg, will you tell us the students' favorite style of music? We're really very conservative. My favorite is classical music, and that's Alexandra's choice too. Katja claims to like rock, so that's a vote from Greg, Alexandra, and Katja.、Uh, doesn't Rachel prefer classical music? Rachel made a choice which surprised me. She plays the violin, so I expected classical or opera. But Rachel says that she prefers country music.、Mm, how interesting! What's Harry's choice? Harry likes to listen to opera and loves to go to see a performance. He says opera has everything. Colour and spectacle and theatre and great music. And Emiko? Emiko says jazz is her favourite music. She goes to listen to jazz every Friday evening. She also likes opera, heavy metal, classical, but jazz is the best. Thank you, Greg. I wanted to see what you all liked, so I could understand your musical tastes more. And I want to move from this to a discussion of the physiological effects of music. In the second part of the discussion, Dr. Lester will talk about the way music affects our bodies. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-seven to thirty. For the purposes of、uh, this discussion, I'm going to divide music roughly into two types: music which stimulates us and music which calms us. It seems that music which stimulates us gives rise to actual changes in our bodies. We listen to exciting music, and our hearts beat faster, our blood pressure rises, and our blood flows more quickly. In short, we're stimulated. Soothing music, however, has the opposite effect. We relax and let the world go by. Our heart beats more gently, our blood pressure drops, and we feel calm.、Um, Alexandra, can you think of things which help us to relax?、Um, gentle rhythms. Yes, in part, the melodies which help us to relax are smooth flowing and often have repeated rhythms. These rhythms are constant and dynamic. A little like the crash of the sea on the beach, their very predictability is sedating, relaxing. By contrast, very loud, discordant music with unpredictable rhythms and structures excites and stimulates us. These two generalizations about the differences between music which stimulates and music which soothes are true as far as they go, but they are far from conclusive. We still have a lot of research to do to find out what,、uh, for instance, people of different cultures hear and feel when they listen to music. This department is taking part in a continuing study on the influence of culture on musical perception, and we'll talk about that more next week. That is the end of part three. You will now have some time to check your answers.
Now it turns to part 4. You will hear a speaker giving a talk about some recent research about unusual life forms. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the sixth of our ecology evening classes. Nice to see you all again. As you know from the programme, today I want to talk to you about some research that is pushing back the frontiers of the whole field of ecology. And this research is being carried out in the remoter regions of our planet, places where the environment is harsh and, until recently, it was thought that the conditions couldn't sustain life of any kind. But life forms are being found. And these have been grouped into what is now known as extremophiles. That is, organisms that can survive in the most extreme environments. And these discoveries may be setting a huge challenge for the scientists of the future, as you'll see in a minute. Now, the particular research I want to tell you about was carried out in Antarctica, one of the coldest and driest places on Earth. But a multinational team of researchers from the US, Canada and New Zealand recently discovered colonies of microbes in the soil there where no one thought it was possible. Interestingly enough, some of the colonies were identified as a type of fungus called Buveria bassiana, a fungus that lives on insects. But where are the insects in these utterly empty regions of Antarctica? The researchers concluded that this was clear evidence that these colonies were certainly not new arrivals. They might have been there for centuries, or even millennia. Possibly even since the last ice age. Can you imagine their excitement? Now, some types of microbes had previously been found living just a few millimetres under the surface of rocks. Porous, Antarctic rocks. But this was the first time that living colonies had been found surviving um, relatively deeply in the soil itself, several centimetres down, in fact. So, the big question is, how can these colonies survive there? Well, we know that the organisms living very near the rock's surface can still be warmed by the sun, so they can survive in their own microclimate and this keeps them from freezing during the day. But this isn't the case for the colonies that are hidden under the soil. In their research paper, this team suggested that the very high amounts of salt in the soil might be the clue, because this is what is preventing essential water from freezing. The team found that the salt concentration increased the deeper down they went in the soil. But while they had expected the number of organisms to be fewer down there, they actually found the opposite. In soil that had as much as 3,000 parts of salt per million, relatively high numbers of microbes were present, which seems incredible. But the point is that at those levels of salt, the temperature could drop to minus 56 degrees before frost would cause any damage to the organisms. This relationship between microbes and salt, at temperatures way below the normal freezing point of water, is a really significant breakthrough. As you all know, life is dependent on the availability of water in liquid form, and the role of salt at very low temperatures could be the key to survival in these kinds of conditions. Now, the process at work here is called supercooling, and that's usually written as one word, but it isn't really understood as yet, so there's a lot more for researchers to work on. However, the fact that this process occurs naturally in Antarctica may suggest that it might occur in other places with similar conditions, including on our neighbouring planet, Mars. So, you can start to see the wider implications of this kind of research. In short, it appears to support the growing belief that extraterrestrial life might be able to survive the dry, cold conditions on other planets after all. 
Not only does this research produce evidence that life is possible there, it's also informing scientists of the locations where it might be found. So all of this might have great significance for future unmanned space missions. One specialist on Mars confirms the importance of the... That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Please share your score in the comment box below.